life over the thorny underbrush. That would be the proper punishment for Professor E. Wei Zhang. Make him run for his life the way mother and father elephants run for their lives from the vermin who hunt them, sometimes from gunships. I told you it was China. I told you it was the Chinese. And I told you it has to be stopped. But what's the point of getting angry? This is not a big issue to Obama. The world is a perfect place. There's no uh, elephant problem. There's no uh, great mountain gorilla problem. There's only a Republican problem. Well, here's some good news. Al Jazeera America shutting down. Nice going, Al Gore. Al Gore sold him this dumpy outlet, which they turned into Al Jazeera, made a fortune on it. The good Democrat Al Gore did the great progressive Al Gore, Al Gore, and now apparently, apparently, it was fool's gold. They made a massive investment in trying to uh, brainwash you in the United States three years ago, and now Al Jazeera is slamming the brakes on its American operation, shutting down. April thirtieth, and that's the end of the road. Al Gore laughs all the way to Switzerland. Those are some of the headlines that we haven't touched on yet on the Savage Nation. Uh, what else do you want to talk about? The phone number is 855 I would be remiss as a famous talk radio host if I didn't play for you a little bit of what the academic subversive said last night in his parallel universe uh, on the Savage Nation. And I think the most important one is what he said about ISIS, because I've never heard anything like this in my life. As I said to you earlier in hour one, but I forgot to tell you in hour two, when he made this statement on ISIS, I had just left dinner in a restaurant. I was in the bar area of the restaurant. They played him saying ISIS doesn't pose a threat. I screamed at the television set. I cursed him on, on the television set in this bar. And three guys said, can I buy you a drink? They didn't know who I was. I didn't say anything. I just left. I've never heard anything like this. It's propaganda, day and night propaganda, by a man living in a parallel universe. Who believes him anymore? Well, apparently all of Congress does, because I've never seen such sycophants in my life, and I mean both sides of the aisle. Did you see him kiss Ruth Bad Girl Ginsburg? Did you see him reach down and actually kiss that crocodile face? By the way, what is this thing about kissing everybody? A president kissing everybody. We're not living in France. We're not living in Italy with the kissing. What is this? Well, anyway, it's just absurd, the whole thing. It's not just the kissing and the glad handing and the applause every three seconds. It's the lowness of the level of discussion. The speech itself was an embarrassment. A smart fifth grade valedictorian could have done a better speech than he did last night. If you were to strip away the applause and listen to the emptiness of what he actually said, I would have given a fifth grade valedictorian a D on the lies. I would have said, you know, honey, you can really talk, but you're not saying anything here. How can you actually say the things you said about ISIS? when you know that they are an existential threat to those who are already dead. 855-400-7282 is the uh, phone number. I don't really want to play more of the speech. I mean, we have it, but it's almost embarrassing to play it. How could he push the climate agenda at a time like this? Why? Because he's a zealot. That's one of the biggest money earners yet. That's, that's one of the biggest cash cows ever created by the uh, cabal that runs the uh, West this uh, climate change business. And so that's why he did it. Iran releases footage of U.S. sailor apologizing after capture. Joe Biden says, we didn't apologize. And then, of course, one of the most dangerously, oh, I don't have the words anymore, facile members of the administration, John Kerry, you know what I think of him. We uh, call him Lurch for years on this show for a number of reasons. You can laugh at him all you want, but if you look at him, it's all you need to know is looking at him. I mean, this is a man who would make an undertaker proud. This is a man who, if you were casting a movie for a pallbearer in a Western set in the 1870s, John Kerry would be the chief pallbearer. And so John Kerry thanks the Iranian authorities during this kabuki play in clip number 2-1. 21, please, Robert. Fire it away. I also want to thank the Iranian authorities for their cooperation and quick response. Uh, these are always situations which, as everybody here knows, have an ability, uh, if not properly guided, to get out of control. Guided. guided. Um, and I'm a 
appreciative for the quick and appropriate response of the Iranian authorities. All oh indications God. suggest or tell us that our sailors were well taken care of, provided with blankets and food, and oh assisted God. with their return to the fleet earlier today. Subversive, seditious speech, end of story. But there's nothing more I could say to you. The whole country's been riddled with this kind of BS. And the, the, entire, the entire event, from my point of view, was orchestrated. Someone in the Obama administration either sabotaged these boats via the GPS signal, or the Iranians overrode the signals of the GPS to run them aground and to take our sailors hostage and humiliate the United States military and to steal our technology from these fast boats. Do you remember the drone I asked you two hours ago? Am I the only one in, American me in the American media who has a memory? Do you remember what Obama did? I believe it was in 2011 when he delivered to the Iranians a drone without a scratch on it, our most advanced drone. And the U.S. Air Force said, whoops, sorry. Did anyone ever go to prison for that? No. Will anyone go to prison for this? Who did this? So it just was set up, in my opinion, to make Iran look like nice guys. So when Obama gives them back $70 billion or whatever the number may be, over the weekend we say, well, the Iranians aren't so bad. Look, they just returned our sailors nice, safe, and sound. They came back with storybooks. They came back with a gift basket from Tehran. It was very much like going to the Academy Awards or the Golden Globes for our sailors. They were given little gift baskets. The uh, hair and the fingernails, the fingers even, from uh, victims who were tortured to death in Iranian prison cells, set in amber were given to each of them. A little Iranian gift basket of the horror and terror nation that we are now suddenly in love with. What did you think of the faces of the Joint Chiefs of Staff? They looked like uh, Potemkin's say It looked like a... Uh, I, I don't have words again for it. I, wherever I turned, I saw stooges. Everywhere, there was nobody protesting there. I heard that one... A U.S. congressman walked out on Obama last night. Stephen King got up and walked out. But I didn't see the cameras following him, did you? There was no there was no frowning. Stupid Rubio sat there looking like someone took away his ice cream cone. That's the most he could do. He didn't frown. He didn't do a thumbs down. He didn't scowl. He didn't give any signal that he disagreed with the thing that Obama said. He just sat there like a little boy waiting for someone to give him an ice cream cone, actually. And so what's the point of talking about it? You would expect me to knock Obama the next day, right? Yeah, that's what. Let's tune in and hear the clown put down Obama during his State of the Union address. address. Oh, you just did. Okay, well, can we move on now? No, we can't move on. He lives in a, in a parallel universe. Because when you hear what he had to say about ISIS, you have to understand that ISIS doesn't know that you're a good progressive. They don't know that when they plant a bomb in a supermarket or, God forbid, a child care center or a... Uh, Delhi, for, a, for that matter, or school. They don't know that you're a good progressive communist who wants to see the overthrow of America. They don't care, because to them you are what? You are an infidel. And the day you come to understand either you're with us against them, or you are putting yourself in danger as well, you will understand nothing. And the minute I come back, I'm going to play Obama's seditious lie about the, relative, the relativity of the non-threat of ISIS on the savage nation. As we focus on destroying ISIS, over-the-top claims that this is World War III just play into their hands. Masses of fighters on the back of pickup trucks, twisted souls plotting in apartments or garages, they pose an enormous danger to civilians. They have to be stopped, but they do not threaten our national existence. That, that is the story ISIL wants to tell. That's Parallel the kind of universe. propaganda they use to recruit. Psychopath. We don't Psychopath. Need... Keep going. Keep playing the psycho so they get the and full... And we sure don't need to push away vital allies in this fight by Who? echoing the lie that ISIL is somehow representative of one of the world's largest religions. Be beyond belief. Beyond belief? We just need to call them what they are. Killers and fanatics. Oh who have to be God. rooted out, hunted down, okay, stop. and destroyed. The man is crazy. He's a liar. He's a sociopath, and he's very dangerous. There's the first rule of warfare, which is know thy enemy. And either he knows the enemy or he doesn't know it, and he's you know, fabricating this. Not connected to a religion? We didn't say all Muslims are fanatics like this or murderers, but if you disconnect it from its core uh, systematic 
narrative, which is connected to Islam. It's called Islamic State because it's not the Buddhist state, it's not the Jewish state, not the Christian state, not the Hindu state. It's not the Zoroastrian state, it's not the Yazidi state. It's not Brooklyn state, it's not New York state, it's not uh, any other state. It's not even a state of mind, it's a state of Islam. And it's a division of Islam. And if it's one small division of Islam, we should say thank God. But you don't deny it's a relative of one of these world great religions. It's the only way you can come to understand where their fanatics get their ideas from. They're not getting it from the Christian Bible to hang people and set them on fire while they're alive. They're getting these punishments from their own deranged interpretation of their religion. Make no mistake about it. Until we understand that and have a president who understands that, we will continue to lose American citizens. Europe will continue to lose citizenry and land to these fanatics. One day, perhaps, and I hope it won't be too late at that point, there will finally be a wall that slams shut and we start the deportation proceedings that are necessary to save our lives. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. For all of you uh, who are uh, microdosing on LSD while working, welcome back to the Savage Nation. Phone number here is 855 4728. We're watching the meltdown of a great nation under this academic imposter. And apparently the media can't get enough of him. If Jane Fonda, as I said, had become president, we'd have about exactly what we have right now. Instead of posing with a North Vietnamese anti aircraft gun, during the Vietnam War, we have uh, Obama and Kerry fundamentally using our Navy as an agitprop item to boost up the image of the terror nation of Iran so they can return, what is it, $65 billion in assets that were seized to constrain them from their nuclear ambitions. That'll happen this weekend. The whole thing looks orchestrated to me. It's shocking, by the way, and I don't even know how a Democrat cannot see through this. I feel like becoming, well, not becoming, I feel like, well, I feel like studying the hermit crab. Maybe I should study the hermit crab. What the hermit crab does is very interesting. I think I'm going to buy a hermit crab shell. They, uh, you can buy a 10-pack small shell 10-pack, a variety pack from our small shell category. I just went on Google to look up hermit crab shells. And what's going to happen now is every time I load a news story, it's going to be trying to sell me hermit crab shells for the rest of my life. That's why I have to replace what I look for. I'm tired of looking. I look once for a sock. Everywhere I turned, every news story, they were selling me socks. I couldn't stand looking at the socks, so I looked for a spoke wheel for my Jaguar. That went on for 10 days. So now I'm looking at hermit crab shells in order to get away from, sp from spokes and, uh, and socks. But, you know, with what's going on in our country today, I can understand the hermit crab. But there's no hiding, is there? There's no hiding from the realities of the world that we live in. Sometimes we think you can hide, get under a nice warm cover at night, lock the door, load the gun, put on the burglar alarm, and maybe we get away for a few hours. But our minds can't stop wondering how an imposter like this continues to get away with it. It's like he's the great magician. He's like Merlin the magician. He keeps lying, destroying things, and gets away with it. And goes down the speech last night like on a red carpet at the Golden Globes, slaps and hugs and kisses and love from both parties. And I look at it from the outside as a citizen of this great nation, as an immigrant son, and I say, what nation am I living in that such frauds and imposters and outright thieves could be running this country? How is it possible? How is it possible? Is there not one honest man in that entire auditorium who is willing to stand up and scream, I object, you liar! ISIS is a threat! I object, you liar! Tell that to the parents of those killed in San Bernardino and be thrown out of the auditorium. Is there not one honest man in the, in the entire Congress? Well, the question, of course, has its answer built into it. And then I watch nature programs for some of my inspiration. I was tired last night. I didn't want to watch any more of the violence and the boxing and the this and the news. I turn on a nature show. Here we go again. 
the, the Australian Barrier Reef, and they go all the way down the bottom, and the bottom, the sh- it says, fish sleep at night, 